Hey everybody, welcome to Geek Storm. I am Sean Hilton, owner of Comics Cube, located at 121 East Sycamore, where we want you to come in and spend some money. And while you're down here on Geek Street, come visit our good friends right here, where we're at today at 111 East Sycamore. That is Kokomo Toys and Collectibles, the finest toy store in all the world. In the world? In the world! Holy cow. Right next to them, you're gonna find American Dream Hi-Fi, where you can get all your used and new vinyl. That's records, not uh, flooring. And right next to them <laughs> is chapter two, books. So, a day on Geek Street is a day uh, with the whole family, something for everybody. You could spend something. the entire the entire day on Geek Street. I don't, yeah, because there's eateries. You could eat down yes. here, too. Yes! You know, so. That's what's going on. Hey, today I am joined by my good friend, Mike Harrison, who's back with us. Very exciting times to get into. Lots of geek news that he is very excited to bring you. So here we go. Thank you for visiting Kokomo Toys and Collectibles. Okay, this is where I put the sound of the crickets. <laughs> that's good. So, uh, hey, what's up? You know, just enjoying life. Been, oh, been doing fantastic. a lot of reading. That's and fantastic. A lot of listening. What are you reading? Things of that nature. I'm reading a book by R.A. Salvatore. Oh, yeah. Um, it was, One of my favorite authors. It was authors. tough. Because I had to find, because he's written a ton of stuff. Yeah. I wanted something that wasn't D&D or Dritz related. Right. It's tough. I wanted something that, that wasn't. That takes out 70% of, um, of his work. Media related. Hmm. So I had to find something that was his original stuff. Uh -huh. And was the first book in a series. That had no connection to anything exactly. else. Exactly. So okay. I finally found something. Okay. It's okay. Okay. It, uh, it's okay. Um, having read 22 of the Drizz books. Oh, man. You really like that Dark Elf. Um, because they aren't all Dark Elf. Um, he does go off on, on a three-book tangent here and a three-book tangent there. Uh, but he fancies himself very good, and he mostly is at uh, choreography of fight scenes. And I just felt like at some point I'm, I'm seeing the same fight scene over and over. You know, uh, he's describing well, the same thing. 22 books. I know, it's a so lot. So many times you it's can a lot. thrust a sword. Yes, snap. He uses the word snap a lot. Snap. He snapped his scimitar. He snaps uh, yeah, he, he says that a lot. A <clears throat> Thank you, Mike, for the affirmation. Snappity snap. snap, snap. <clears throat> so, but uh, he's still a great author, a great body of work. I don't know how many. I stopped at 22 because I didn't like the particular trilogy they were on. Um, when that one's over, I think it is probably close to over, then I'll probably, I might jump back on, but. Okay. That's it. Uh, I'm in the middle of a uh, Stephen King uh, novel that's kind of old uh, called Desperation. Yeah. Um, Is it town? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm about in the middle of that right now. Uh, next, next month I'm going to switch gears. Uh, I'm going to try some of the Warcraft uh, uh, novels. Uh, okay. um, some of the early ones just to see the kind of the, the real history of, of stuff. Because since I'm playing classic right now, there's, you know, I'm kind of immersed in that, so I'm gonna try one and see how it is. Cause I get the, I get, I'm on the Audible. I get the one credit every month, yep. and so that's my, that's probably gonna be on with, February. With my Audible, I just got listening to um, the Name of the Wind, and the sequel to that is like the Fear of the Wise Man. Hmm. Um, it's not often that I recommend something to people. I take my recommendations fairly seriously. Mm -hmm. I like to think, okay, if I'm gonna put it out there, I want it to be really good. Sure. Excellent. And not only is it excellent. The uh, audio adaptation is one of the best I've ever listened to. Speaking Absolutely of that. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, on, the, on the same note, I used to enjoy, let's say, I've been listening to audiobooks probably as long as they've been out. A long time. Uh, and I used to enjoy Stephen King reading his own stuff. Okay. I used to enjoy that because he said himself, you know, only the writer knows the inflection and, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, but... After years and years in audiobooks are becoming much more popular, and you've got real solid actors you doing voice them. Voice actors. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't. And this one, Desperation, is Stephen King again, and I don't like it. Yeah. Okay, he. He reads your book. He 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 reads. He, yes, and he doesn't try to act the parts, or yes. even even use different voice inflections for different characters. Um, I, I'm very. Uh, Spoiled by uh, Will Patton, who is a, a, an actor. If you looked him up, you, you, you know, know who he is right away. Um, but he does a lot of King stuff. He's great at all the voices. Um, I've also found, uh, last time, I, the book previous to this, I don't like female, I don't like listening to females uh, read books because uh, they have a harder time. Well, the one I listened to, also, I won't generalize. Okay, I was going to say. The one I listened to had a harder time with the different characters. Uh, like she didn't try to deepen her voice for male characters, whereas most of the time, the male character, the, the Will yes. Patton, he he, well, he changes around quite a bit, and, yeah. and you you can you hear the difference between characters. 
I would uh, I would highly recommend using one of your credits mm -hmm. to get uh, this uh, Name of the Wind thing. Name of the Wind. It's like 20 plus hours long. <clears throat> and it sounds like a Monty Python the, thing. It is not. It's very serious. you got to get through like the first 50 pages, uh -huh. 50 sure. whatever, the sure. first hour. Because uh -huh. even I'm like, I don't get it. Somebody has tried to loan me this book uh -huh. for years. I've found an actual physical copy on my shelf, which I know I didn't buy. Uh -huh. So somebody has given me this. Right. And I'm like, finally, I'm like, you know what? I got to the point with my Audible uh -huh. credits uh -huh. where they're like, they're supposed to, they're going to start dropping off. Yeah, right, yeah, right. I think it's six months, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I had enough credits that so they weren't going to give me any more, and they were going to start disappearing. I'm like, right. well, I'm going to spend them, right? Because you know, whatever. Yeah. And so, so many people had suggested this, and I'm like, all right, I'll try it. And it also had the one thing that I like before I check out much, which mm. is it had link. And like, if I'm gonna pay an audio book, that mm -hmm. credit, mm -hmm. that credit is worth the same to me if I get a two hour book, right. or if I get the entire works of Arthur Conan Doyle. Mm -hmm. So if I'm gonna spend that credit to me to have value, I want at least like 15 hours. Uh, and Stephen King stuff, I would imagine <clears throat> you can get that pretty easily. I didn't know what this is gonna turn into audio audio hour, but. Sure, let's get into it. Uh, but, but take a drink, you, uh, you go audio. I, uh, uh, two months ago, I got the, I was kind of on a on a Stephen King, you know, binge. Mm. I got off of it and got uh, the Secret Wars. They did a novelization of the Secret Wars. Now this was the Nick Fury version, not the "We Went to a Strange Planet" that was all busted up version. No, it was the old version. Oh, this was the yeah. busted up Beyonder version. Yes, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. And it had it had different voice actors for every single person, and it had some sound effects and, and stuff like that. So it had it had production value on it. Um, you know how like, you'll go to Books a Million or wherever uh, wherever you're at, and there'll be like novelizations of different Marvel stories. Sure. It was that. It was somebody had had, had turned okay. that twelve issues into a novel, and then this was the dramatization of that. I was kind of hoping it would be. Thinking at looking at it, I thought, oh man, because I loved the Kingdom Come audio is is awesome, and uh, I'd like to uh, think that this was going to be as good as that. It was it was okay. It just wasn't it wasn't great. Okay. But it was it was pretty good. It was and it was pretty true to the to the series and everything. So I enjoyed it. Well, very cool. Highly recommend it. Check it out. So that was uh, Audio Hour <laughs> here on uh, Geek Storm with Sean and Mike. And if you've got a favorite audio book that you think we should check let out. Let us know. Let us know. I just this morning, I finished the two. mdukes so at cityofkokomo.org. I think. Is what you want. <laughs> I th Go ahead. I th oh. <laughs> it's not, not his email. It isn't? I think I started the first in the Witcher series this morning. Uh -huh. I think. Mm -hmm. Wait, books or? The audio. Show, okay. okay. The gotcha. audio. Okay. Um, but I don't know yeah. because the way it's done, it's not easy to figure out. It's not like book one. Right. It's so, I don't know. It starts off with some... Uh, a story about the Geralt and some chick named Sissy or something. Cersei but then maybe? you find out it's just some bard right. singing to a bunch of people under yes. an old tree. Yes. So I'm like, I don't know if that's the first toss one a coin to your, Toss a coin to your Witcher. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of memes. I haven't seen that sure. yet, so I don't know what that, you know. The best one I've seen, and I'm not, I Did guess. Did you watch the TV show? No, I watched the first episode. I didn't okay. think much of it. Okay. I'll get back to it once I get through a bunch of stuff I do think much of. Sure. Maybe I just watched the first one in a bad mood, I don't know, but... Speaking of Netflix... The first one didn't do much for me. I watched the first episode of October Faction. Really? This morning. That is based on a comic book. I own that you comic that? book. I own really? that. I do. I'm surprised. I didn't oh. know you bought that. Oh, yeah, I did. I bought it. I have the first issue, and that's it. Okay. Uh, the, the comic itself is very stylized. Very, almost yeah, uh, Bill are, Sienkiewicz. The art is uh, uh, hard on the eye if you're not used to it. It looks... Like, each one looks like a painting, and not a photorealistic painting. More yeah. of a more of an abstract type yeah. of deal. So um, sharp angles, yeah. harsh edges, very like arty, that. very, very. Um, I would say like. Uh, the comics had a couple of DC sequels. Vertigo. I think it's IDW that does that yes, one. Yes, it is. And it, is. Uh, it did all right. Mm -hmm. It was kind of. Uh, I sold it as a horror suspense book. Um, I read the first one or two, right. and then kind of got out of that one because the art, I think. And it made it a little hard to figure out. After watching the first on. episode, I went back and reread the first issue. Okay. And they're very different. Uh, yeah, it is about a, a kind of a family. It seems uh, mother, father, uh, daughter, daughter, son. <clears throat> but in the show, it's almost a. There's this organization. The Presidio. Uh, yes, and I won't say it's Men in Blackish, but it's very a secret organization that fights monsters. It's the Men kid, in Blackish without humor. Yeah, the kids don't know about it. And the uh, the parents are monster hunters, basically with ages. with with a budget. So um, it was it was pretty good. It was watchable, and uh, I'll, I'll keep watching it. The end definitely had some great visuals. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to watch it and see how it goes. What I found interesting about it, yeah, was that uh, the two major cast members, mm -hmm. both, 
um, I'm like, that looks like blah, blah, blah. That looks like blah, blah, blah. And mm. I was wrong. Mm. I had to finally look it up. The, uh, the mom is from Bones. Yes. But at first, I'm like, is that um, Morpheus's wife from Firefly? Because oh, no, no. For sure. Gina, Gina, Gina Torres? Got, yeah. First scene, she's got the longer hair. Yeah. Gina and Torres. I'm like, Gina Torres. So yeah. I'm like, well, after a couple minutes, I'm like, well, it's definitely not Gina Torres. But then I'm like, well, then is it, um, oh, the, the woman who was in Daredevil as the night nurse? Oh, um, Rosario Dawson. Rosario Dawson. Dawson. Wasn't her either. Wasn't her either. So then I'm finally like, I know who this actress is. Right. Who is it? Mm. And I looked, I'm like, oh, okay, that's yeah. how I know her. I watched like this first five or six seasons of Bones. Right. And she comes in, I think, is she the second director? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought there was somebody before her. There was, there was a, a male that was the director. Um, but she does seem very similar. Yeah. There's some Rosario Dawson. There's some, uh, yeah, I was just like, man. And then the other guy looked like um, the main actor. Uh, looks like, I think he was in, was it, no, that's, oh, I'm going to be, I don't know. It's going to be horrible. <laughs> that's a great story, though. Yeah. Uh, oh, the bad guy from Stranger Things. Oh, no. Uh, uh, Matthew Modine. He looked a little, he had a, he had a touch of Matthew Modine. Yeah, he did. Not, and enough that I like, that's not yeah. Matthew Modine. Right. But that could easily be his brother yeah. or somebody directly related by it, blood. It's Pat, it's Pat Modine. Is it really? No. It's oh, not. <laughs> such a jerk. Why do you got to be that way, Mike? Uh, yeah, I recognized him, but I couldn't tell you what anything he's been so, in. I um, got up early this morning to watch it because you oh, wanted good. to talk about oh, it. Good. And so I've been up since about 7 a.m. to get ready for Geekstorm today. It's only one-hour show. And, uh, and the rest are much shorter. Oh, are they? Yeah, they're okay. you know they're the typical 40-some minutes, but mm -hmm. some are as low as 30-some mm -hmm. um, minutes. So yeah. I don't think it'll take too long to blow through it. Interesting, you get uh, a little bit of action, but it's mostly family drama with the reveal of the Monster Hunter uh, organization Presidio stuff. Right. But then, towards the end, you get a little bit of Haunted uh, Hill House kind of a vibe mm -hmm. as people are having visions. Right. And you don't know if they're directly related to the ha house that they've inherited from right. the main actor's uh, grandfather, father, right. who also was in the same organization. Right. So it's been passed down yes. to the family kind yes. of a thing. Um, there's generations to it. L enough drama, enough interesting things going on, but definitely felt it was very heavily anchored by the actress, and I thought she really was the, the mom. piece that brought it together for me. The mom? Yeah, she was great. She was good. Um, she really stole the show for me. Yeah, she's honest. gonna be, I feel like she's gonna be the, like you said, the anchor, but she's gonna be the central calming force of the of what the kids are gonna go through, what the dad seems like he's going through. She's gonna be the, the thing that, that holds Love it all it. Holds it together. So, so, thought that uh, was good. Check it out, it's a good show. Good and show. then uh, today, I will also, just on my note, mm -hmm. Sean's super happy, I get Sabrina number three, which I did see pop up on my Netflix this morning. Super excited about that. Mm -hmm. Love Sabrina 1 and 2. Okay. 1 and 2 came out pretty close together, too. They did, they did. And then 3 had a fairly long extended hiatus mm -hmm. until we got it. Mm -hmm. And now we are also getting The Last of the Ranch, which I would imagine I, I'm i going to go home as fast as I can tonight. We'll order a pizza, and we will binge watch almost all of that tonight. Wow. We will get very close to the end of that, wow. I would think. Um, should be only like 10 episodes, I would guess. So mm -hmm. if we don't get at least four in, mm -hmm. I'll be really, really surprised. So okay. um, very excited about that. Picard hit CBS All Access, which is another streaming service. It is. Are there any shows that we're ever going to talk about ever again that are on mainstream television? Uh, do you watch Bull? So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm like. I don't. In fact, I, I have Hulu set up. <laughs> uh -huh. And we were going through and I'm like, man, this hasn't come back in a while. We're looking at you know the oh, shows and new, it's like you're caught right, up. Right. So I'm like, we have to, like just a curiosity. Yeah. Pull out the tablet. Uh -huh. Is Bluff City Law still going? Nope, canceled. Oh right. Go. Like, oh, well, we take that off. Yeah. Sunnyside with uh, Kumar, um, from Carol and Kumar go to White Castle. He oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy canceled. Yeah. I'm like, oh well. Yeah. Was, we don't have to worry about uh, yeah, yeah. ever seeing those again then. But yeah. you know the entire time I'm like, all right, when's the next episode coming? Yeah. Rookie doesn't come back till like fe the end of February. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm under the impression not getting great ratings. I don't know, so uh, it's love tough. Love that show. It's tough. So, but Picard, so you, we haven't seen it yet? Have I haven't seen it yet. I haven't either. I All did, right. the only thing I did is good. Mike says it's very good. Uh, I did go through and watch one of the Nerdist, maybe or somebody said these are the, uh, make sure you watch these nine episodes, episodes of whatever in order to prepare for Picard. And they're only going off of scenes they see in the in the preview, okay. they didn't know foreknowledge really of the show, so um, so I watched a bunch of those. Uh, you know, it was cool to see some of the old stuff, and um, uh, I got kind of stuck on they jump ahead to uh, 
a couple episodes of Voyager uh, because that involved Seven of Nine because she's in the trailer and watched some of that and I got stuck on that and I watched a lot of Voyager. And I've then, never watched much of Voyager, so that's. Voyager's my second uh, after after Next Generation. Voyager is my is my my next favorite really? uh, series. I really like it the best. It's they're out there. They're on their own. They don't have the Federation to to. to uh, it's one I want to rely on. I want to get through DS Nine because everybody I know who I, whose opinion I respect loves it. I don't. But honestly, I've watched all the first season once. It was yeah. painful to get through. Yeah, I did the same thing. I'm now trying to watch the first season again yeah. to get through. The whole thing, it remains painful. It is. Uh, but people who I know love it. They they swear by it. I so, got through it to get through it um, so I could talk, it about, talk with people about it. Um, so where we sit and we film this show, we see the street, and we see people walking by on the street, and there is a fairly, uh, there are probably five-inch letters that say close mm -hmm. on the door, mm -hmm. and yet as we're filming this, some guy's up there like trying the door, and he's trying it in a manner like, well, there's something wrong with it. Even though at his literal eye level, which I just saw, he could see it very clearly said closed. In his defense, nope. he was nope. looking at his phone the entire time he crossed the street up on the sidewalk. How can he be expected to read a sign, Sean, when he's looking at his phone? That's crazy. You expect too much of people. It's crazy. I was in a comic book store the other day. Okay, weird. Not mine. Oh, weird. I was out of town, mm -hmm. and I was doing some business, and I decided, all right, I'll stop in. I've been in this store a couple times. Now, I do not, I make it a habit of not Bad mouthing uh, other comic store. Shop. So we're not going to say the name was of it, the store. Was it here in town? No, it was not. Okay. Then I, I was out of town okay. on business, okay. literally for once doing okay. other stuff related okay. to my business. Mm -hmm. And so I go in, I've got a customer, and he wants a copy of a book. Um, so I ask for, you know, does he have the number one issue of this book? Right. And it's from <clears> late 80s. <throat> and he kind of, the, the Owner, mm -hmm. not not help. I know it's the owner. Mm -hmm. Kind of chuckles and like like I'm like asking for too much. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's a, and I'll just say it's a question. Uh, the question comic. Okay. Going for question number one. Uh huh. And I'm like, hey, do you have question number one? It's not that big a book. Sure. I've had multiple copies through the store over the years. Sure. Not a not a big deal. Mm -hmm. And he's, oh, oh well, no, that is a super hot book right now. And I'm like, really? That's odd. <laughs> Um, I love the character, mm -hmm. followed the character. I have all the issues. And you I'm do? trying to get this, you know, thing for a buddy. Mm -hmm. But his attitude, oh yeah, well he's got a TV show coming out and this and that, and it's uh, it's, it's getting up to be a pricey book. And mm -hmm. I'm like, so in the back of my head, I'm like, I'm now laughing mm -hmm. internally because I'm like, you're full of shit. There's no way. I'm like, one, the book that I just asked for is not his first appearance. Right. It's not his first appearance in the DC universe after the questions acquired. Mm -hmm. He's popped up in multiple things. Honestly, other than having the number one on it, right. there's really nothing that special about that particular book. Right. Then on top of it, he's been, uh, oh, he's going to have a TV show. The character has already popped up in several episodes of the Justice League cartoons. <coughs> so he's not new to the little screen and other things. Right. Plus, the other thing that I'm just like, and I really fought myself, younger Sean would have definitely blurted this out. Mm. Older Sean kept it, and I'm like, who isn't in a TV show or a movie? Mm -hmm. Who's not rumored to be? Right. Who's not optioned right now? Right. This show right now is optioned. I'm supposed to be played by Danny DeVito, and <laughs> you're supposed to be played by a weatherman. I don't know, but what? Uh, what weatherman? Which one? Weatherman. Pick one. It's your choice. No. We'll we'll say Will Ferrell is a weatherman. I want to be Judd Nelson. Can I be Judd Nelson? You can, sure. yeah, that's an easy get. Come on, seriously. He's that's be an at easy the get. the Lexington comic show. Coming. Is he? Yeah. Oh. So, but you know, just the point being is like, I've been in this business a long time now, mm -hmm. and I'm no longer like the new kid. I've been right. doing this for a long time. Sure. I'm just sure. like, are you just are you, a? Do you know what you're talking about? Right. B. <clears throat> a senility kicked in. Right. Three. Right. Uh, I'm just like, are you just are you just trying to mess with me? Since you're counting off, I'll say number one, you just put down a customer. Uh -huh. Number two, you're telling me that's a really cool thing, and we don't have cool things here. Okay, <laughs> so he's not doing a great job. Okay. Yeah, it's just nuts. Now it did turn out. Damn, I, name the name this name that store right not, now. You not, name it. I will not do it. Name it. Um, Tell me later. It. I will. Yeah, oh yeah. Tell me later. I'll, off the clock. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll put it in the comments. Not a problem. Um, so then I contact the customer, my customer, going, hey, uh, right. and I told him the story, because I'm right. like, hey, right. just so you know, you were part of a great story. Uh -huh. And he goes, hey, just so you know, yeah, I don't need a number one. <laughs> I need a number 17. Uh, so I looked up 17, and I like, uh, I actually wrote back, oh, you're screwed, dude. Why, 17 is super hot. <laughs> why is the, what's the big deal about 17? 17 uh, has Rorschach in it. Oh. So the, the guy who plays the question, Vic Sage, right. gets on a plane, right. picks up something that had been left behind. It's a Watchmen trade paperback. Uh, I see. So he reads the the right. comic in the world, right. 
and there's a panel with Rorschach that they actually just kind of copy straight out of the graphic novel. In fact, they might have actually just taken right. the clip, put it from there. But they're trying to say it's like the first appearance of Rorschach in the DC universe, That's dumb. and they're making this big deal out of it, and right. it is selling for like seventeen dollars. Uh, now this was That's super up, hot up until just a uh, you know a couple months ago <laughs> before that was this became a thing. Sure. That was a dollar book right. at best. Right. Um, Three dollar book if you're paying you know inflated mm. prices. Who's so, laughing now, Sean? Yeah, well, I already have a copy. Who's myself, laughing? Who's so, laughing but, now? Uh, you know, well, not me. I'll just wait because that book will. All right. I definitely come back around in a dollar. Right. So um, it was just an odd thing, and uh, I'm just like, are you? Ugh, other stores sometimes. I'm just uh, I'm baffled by the treatment of customers and whatnot. It, so. it, it is baffling. So there you go. I went and saw. Little JoJo Rabbit yesterday you by did. Taiko Watiti, oh. and I absolutely adored it. Thought First it was off, I want to I want to congratulate you for pronouncing a difficult name. That's it's really strong. You know go, what? Go for ahead. once, there's somebody whose name is worth pronouncing correctly mm -hmm. because he's doing such a fine job Good. at everything he's doing. Mm -hmm. He is. Um, he's made me happy with his acting. Mm -hmm. He makes me thrilled with The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. He, you know, Thor, this, the Wilder people, just everything the guy touches, I am loving. And this is no no different. He, what we do in the shadows? What's that? What we do in the shadows? I haven't seen that yet. It's all right. Is it? Um, I mean, he's got his name on it, so I'll definitely go out to see it now. He's even in it. Um, anything that he's touching, I'm going to go and mm -hmm. make a. He's uh, he's kind of my new Kevin Smith. There used to be a time when Kevin Smith, if his name was involved right, with it, right. I was going to check it out. Right. So obviously, you know. It seems like lately all yeah. Kevin Smith is doing is cashing in on Kevin Smith. You Absolutely. Know? It's, his, he's, he's, it's his brand. He, he is he constantly. He is his own brand now. Yeah, like revitalizing his own brand all the time. Uh, his big new movie, the Jersey Jim Girl, Silent Bob reboot. Jersey Girl talked about a thing or two. Didn't go to the theaters. Right. He like is doing this tour right. where I think it released through Fathom kind of a thing for sure. two days. Um, so if you wanted to see it, you could go that way. Otherwise, yeah, he just kind of tours with the film. Uh -huh. You watch the film, and then he does like a three-hour until he turned the lights off Q&A. So, yeah, his paycheck is his brand. Now, he's doing some directing. He was doing some CW directing. Right. Um, he might still be doing that. But obviously, he's doing that. He's doing the Clerks, uh -huh. th which I guarantee you will probably be the same way. Yeah. I don't so, expect to see the new Clerks in I mean, Sean Tangent, tell me about, about Jojo Rabbit. Oh, man. <clears throat> just, uh, again, from the commercials and everything you see, mm -hmm. it's about a little boy during World War II. Mm -hmm. And it's actually towards the end uh -huh. of World War II as Germany's starting to lose. But the whole thing is, is like Hitler is his invisible friend. And... <laughs> Because, and that's the absurdest thing about it, it's, it's one of those things where it's kind of showing you things in this satirical manner, but you did have the Hitler youth. Mm -hmm. You did have children who, and this kid's supposed to be 10, at 10 years of age. He's a little German boy. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. I mean, this is exact, it's during that time period, he's gotcha. German boy. He's, mm -hmm. you know, it's what he was taught. You know, it's the propaganda. Right. Everything he's seeing, right. everything he's hearing, mm -hmm. he wants to be a good little Nazi. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in his head, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Right, because that's and, how he's brought up. Yeah, and if they had won the war, right. uh, that's what it would have continued to have been probably. So. Um, it's just interesting take on how it's done mm -hmm. and then how this impacts his life. And uh, they hide in within it some just really well done emotional material. It, it has a well, well done story that is, is worth being told, mm -hmm. but does it in a way that at several points you're going to laugh out loud and chuckle and you know that sort of thing. And then other points you're gonna be fighting back tears. Mm -hmm. So, and he does a really good job of mixing up those emotions and playing it all out. And I believe, um, 99% sure of it, he's Hitler. Uh, Waiko Taiki he is, is he Hitler. Is. And right. he does a great job playing it for laughs. Like, right. it's it's not played, it's like, it's your invisible friend. So all the words and stuff coming out of his mouth mm -hmm. are what would a 10 year old would have thought and stuff like that. Hmm. So, I look forward um, to it. I see well it. worth checking out, it's got uh, German rendition at the beginning, I think, of a Beatles song, and then it ends on David Bowie's We Could Be Heroes, uh, but in German. Uh -huh. And just, it's great. Rebel Wilson mm -hmm. is in it. She's very funny. Scarlett Johansson steals every scene that she's practically in. Um, she's just amazing. So everybody in it does just an excellent job. Well, well worth checking out. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I would definitely love to have, you know, I've got two or three questions mm -hmm. about things that happened that I would love to ask him, mm -hmm. like what happened here? What's the reality versus, mm -hmm. you know, because we're seeing things from different points of view. I'm like, did this happen or did that happen? Mm -hmm. Things like that. So you very could, excited. You could probably Google those questions. I might. I've never done that before. What? 
I've never Googled uh, like, you, questions. I, you've never had to because you always ask me. Um, you know what else happened you is, seen it yet. is, oh, no, you ask me things and I, I know the answer to most things. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the crisis, cri the crisis, the crisis on Infinite Earth crossover. The CW crisis on Infinite Earth is 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 finally complete. It's been over for a couple weeks, so I can talk about it. Uh, it was it was very good. Um, crossover itself, you know, got in the weeds a little bit here and there because they have they wanted to stretch that out over over five well, episodes. They went on a hiatus, right? Yeah, it went. That, they, what the hell? They that's did the first, crazy to me. They did. That's why they always do the crossovers. They do they do one and then the, uh, they do part one and part two. This was part one, two, and three, and part four and five. That's what, but they. I always, don't like you doing the hiatus. I don't either. That's crazy. They shouldn't do a hiatus. Out. Period. Nobody. There should be no hiatus of any kind over the holidays. I mean, I get we, where it started, back. You sure. Know, back we, in the day, but we don't have that anymore. And age. No, we don't have that anymore. So it's dumb. Anyway, uh, it was good. It was a good wrap up. Oliver Queen's dead. Uh, he what? actually died like nine times. What? He, he died a lot. Really? Yeah. He's like dead, gone, dead. Yes. You're. He's not coming back. Stephen Mel's dead. dead. Stephen Mel's done. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um. And I've heard that he becomes a character I really like. He supposedly. does. He does. Which but it, but that's not a continuing. That's not a continuing character though. Okay. Um, he's done. Stephen Amell is done. Uh, and on a kind of a side note, I listened to um, uh, Michael Rosenbaum yeah, podcast. Yeah, I heard about this. So and, you actually listened to that. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's he, he has, you know, he and what he describes later when he comes back on the, for the second half as as a panic attack just from complete and total exhaustion, you know. Guys like that, that are, you know, number one on the call sheet, they're there for 12, 14 hours a day, and, uh, you know, he runs the show, he owns the show, yeah. not owns it, but he, he it's, he, his, it's his baby. It's his, yeah. And um, he and takes he, takes a lot of responsibility for that. And the thing mm. is, is like, he is part of this generation of actors who I don't think can turn it off. Right. Like, I think when he's off the stage and raps at two, yes. three in the morning, yeah. Then his social media kicks in. Yeah. He owns a couple of brands for different things. That's what he said. He's he, got he, so many, you know, irons and so many fires. Even after this, he didn't get much of a break. They only did ten, did ten episodes. Uh, he said he wanted to be done after the end of last season. They said, well, what if we can make you only a ten episode season eight? And he said, okay, he'll do it. He, uh, he said, I said, no, I don't want to do it. He said, then they th then they threw the money at me, and he said. I just couldn't say no. Just from a finest point of point of view, I'd just be losing money to not go and do these ten episodes. So I did it, and he's you know he's on this is on the podcast. He's taking a break, but he just filmed a movie over the last hiatus, and now uh, as soon as Arrow is done, he's got he's got to go to do press for that movie, and then he's starting another project. He's doing a wrestling thing called uh, Faces or, or Heels, called Heels, where he's uh, it's like a it's a streaming service, but it's like a six or eight episode thing where he's uh, he's a a small market wrestler, sure. and he's a big, you know, wrestling fan. Well, he thing, is. But he's showing up at WWE and <clears throat> AEW now. But he's all done. He's dead. Uh, like traditionally in the comic books, it was it was uh, Supergirl dies and Flash. Flash dies. Uh, he kind of takes their place in the in 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 this, and he does the big sacrifice and and etc. Et so now, does the show does Arrow get closure from the last season, or did these ten episodes? Give the show closure, or was there good closure? I haven't seen the end of Arrow yet. I know, I, I, I know it's in the can, and I'm, it may have even been in, been shown. But um, I don't know how they deal with. I don't know if I don't know if Arrow season. I don't know if Arrow episode ten ended before this crisis or not. I, I can't. I can't answer that. Uh, I just know he's he's gone. And at the end of the crisis, it's one universe again, or it's one. Uh, so one, Supergirl's hanging out with one Black Earth, Lightning. One Earth and again. Flash and the and fifth episode was really about that. The the fourth episode ended the crisis. Okay. The fifth episode is them dealing with, hey, what do you you know what are you doing in Star City? You know that type of thing. Well, uh, this is my Earth, and they they're both all they're all realizing that so they're all on one on one thing now. now. Yeah. So that's kind of you said that uh, um, was it Wolfman? Yes. Made a Mar cameo? Wolfman makes a cameo. Uh, um, it's it's Flash and Supergirl, and they're both in the same place having the conversation I just said, and. Uh, a guy comes up with a with a hey Flash Supergirl you guys are my favorites Can, would you mind signing this and they're like hey sir sure we'll sign it how long have we how long have you been fans of the two of us working together oh years and years and years so they have a uh, you know they've combined the universes but also the every, yeah the continuity is all is all everybody That's remembers very funny and um, the next episode of Legends. Um, Apparently, it deals with the fact that everybody loves the legends. They are they are commercialized. They're fan favorites. Every the whole deal. So I can't wait to see that because that's always a fun show. Well, very cool. I'm looking forward to checking it out, um, catching up at some point. Yeah. But as I said, there's just so much material out there now to you can. To I didn't. See. I didn't watch the last season and a half of Arrow. I kind of keep up on Flash. Um, I haven't really kept up on the last season of Supergirl. Just watch this crossover. You're, yeah, you're, I'm, you'll, I'm catch two up. or three seasons behind on everything. Yeah. 
Cross will catch up on everything. So, I honestly don't remember. Hmm? What about Ezra Miller? Oh yeah, that was pretty cool. You're right. Uh, that was, and, and that would have been a great surprise if I had watched it the day it came out because I think it stayed quiet until it came out. But um, there's various parts where they're going through different realities and whatnot, and all of a sudden uh, Ezra Miller shows up as the Flash and 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 meets up with our with our Barry Allen, CW's Barry Allen, and they talk. They probably have a three minute scene, something like that, not too long. Now, is this the last time we're going to see Ezra Miller as the Flash? I think. I don't think so. We've been hearing rumors that. Warner Brothers came to them. Yeah. Did they? Yeah. Because rumors have been like he wants out now. Warner Brothers came to came so to uh, Guggenheim or um, uh, Berlanti, one of them, and said, "Hey, is there any way you can get Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller in this?" So I think that's that's basically a, a modern day name check where we want, we don't remind people who this guy is because we have plans for him down the down the road. I think yeah. I, I think that's happening. Interesting. Yeah. So, so well, very cool. Yeah. So lots of good stuff uh, going on. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody, thanks for checking out Geek Storm. Next week, uh, I imagine we'll finally have a gentleman review, which I was hoping to have today, but I didn't get to see it. Oh, you I'm didn't? Excited. I want to see that. Love Guy Ritchie stuff. We'll talk about 1917, too, because so, I really enjoyed that. Hopefully, you'll good. see it by then. We also made sure to clear off all of the Academy Awards stuff for the last two episodes. Oh, good. Did not mention it all so that you could uh, you could have all that. Thanks. So, Thanks. there you go, everybody. So, while you're in, uh, come on, visit downtown Kokomo, Indiana. Stop by Geek Street. And Unless all you're the incarcerated. Other... I mean, if you get out. No, nope, we don't want visit. you. <laughs> Money's money. I'm going to take it. So there you go. Be groove, everybody.